Well, the big question that is driving this field and will be probably driving it for the next uh, foreseeable 10 years is to understand what makes a planet habitable. So we have seen from the extrasolar planet surveys that there, are, there is a mind-blowing diversity of exoplanets. Now, not all of them will be habitable. So what does it take to make a habitable planet? And I and others believe that in order to answer this question, one has to look at the birthplaces of these planets. Planets are born in the circumstellar disk that surrounds every young star. So this is a disk made up of gas and dust, which is basically a byproduct of the star formation process, which means that every star has a disk. So every star has the potential of making a planetary system. But what type of planetary system this star will make very much depends on the type of disk and the interaction with the radiation from the central star onto this disk. And this comes now closer to my specific question in the current project on TW Hydra. We want to try and understand whether TW Hydra is a disk that is on the verge of dispersal. So disks don't just live forever. At some point, the material in the disk is gone. This spells obviously the end for the formation of giant planets and it very much influences then the further evolution of terrestrial planets or planetary cores that may have already been formed. So I am specifically interested in understanding the dispersal mechanism. And TW Hydra, with the new observations that have come online from ALMA, shows a very interesting feature. It has at the center, at about one AU, so the distance of the Earth to the Sun, it has a hole. And we want to know, is this hole a sign that this disk is being blown away from the central star? In fact, it's being photoapparated from the central star. We want to know, is radiation from the central star hitting the disk, causing a wind, and this wind is now eroding the disk from the inside out? We use numerical simulations to build up a theoretical model that can fit all the known observational constraints for this object. So this is a reverse method. So we know what the answer is. We know how large the hole should be because this is observed. We know how fast the material should still be infalling onto the star because this is also observed. We know how old the disk should be and so more or less how much material should still be into this disk because this is also observed. And so our model has uh, not so many degrees of freedom, which means it's quite well constrained. And we can, we can show that using the observed physical properties of the central star of TW Hydra, our photo operation model naturally reproduces all of the observational constraints that we see at the moment. Now, reverse methods, fitting a theoretical model to observations, is never a proof that this is what's really happening. But you can, of course, show that this is very likely by showing that all the predictions of your model fit anything that is known about the object. And so this makes it a very likely answer to the question. We find that uh, our model could, of photo operation driven by X-rays from the central star could reproduce all the current observational constraints that we have on uh, TW Hydra. In particular, we could reproduce the size of the hole for the age of TW Hydra, the rate of infall of material still onto the central star, which also tells us that this hole is not empty. In fact, one uh, additional observation from uh, ALMA was that right at the centre of this hole, there is some unresolved millimetre emission. Now, this millimetre emission we show in the paper could easily be produced by the material that is still draining onto the central star. And both the gas could produce this emission by Bremsstrahlung 
and the dust component by simply radiating at that wavelength could indeed produce um, that, obs uh, that, that observation. We believe that the most likely explanation for the central hole uh, of TW Hydra is that this disk really is on the verge of dispersal, is being photoapparated from the central star, which means that in order to explain this hole that has been observed, one does not necessarily need to invoke a planet which is formed at uh, 1 AU from the central star. Well, one key question is understanding how disks disperse and how uh, the conditions in the disks that are on divergent dispersal are, because these are the ones that affect the formation of planetary systems. Now, if we are able to show that TW Hydra is indeed a disk which is on divergent dispersal, that in fact is being photoapparated as we speak, this makes this object a perfect laboratory to study exactly this crucial part in the lifetime of a protoplanetary disk. What makes TW Hydra special is that it's old, so it is probably on the verge of dispersal, but also that it's so close to us. This is the closest for the protoplanetary disk to Earth, and it's also seen face on. So we can look at the face of this disk in very deep details. And in fact, the image that we have with ALMA shows many, many features that will give theorists for years to come uh, a lot of fun. On the theory side, there's uh, a lot of work to do in dispersal models. Um, the main thing is to try and find a diagnostic for this pro process that is actually based on observables observables in terms now of spectra that we might get from these objects. In fact, it would be very nice if we could identify a spectral line, so a particular wavelength, a particular emission from the winds that we believe are destroying these disks. And in fact, we have already started a program at the uh, University of Munich in collaboration with other German universities and universities in the UK to try and do exactly that. We want to make our models now um, re more and more realistic in order to be able to really compare our synthetic spectra, our synthetic line profiles, our synthetic emission from these disks to the new observations that are gonna come online. So on the observational side, we are gonna have more and more spectral resolution, so better and better uh, emission lines that we look at, that we can look at. We're going to have more and more detail uh, from the structure of these disks and from many more disks than we have at the moment. And so the outlook is to build a theoretical framework that can be used to exploit the wealth of new observational data that is going to come online in the next few years. <laughs>